everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, I am so excited to talk about today's topic. Uh, today is Mar uh, May 24th. It's been quite some time since I've really showed you guys the backyard. We had filmed quite a bit in the early spring, and I haven't had much time to get out here and do much work or even film anything. So we're finally out here on May 24th, and the garden, the yard is booming. Things have really leafed out. There's been a huge explosion of growth with these warm temperatures we've been having now in May. After about the first week in May, we really started to ramp up the temperatures. I think today is almost 90 degrees. Really quite warm here in Pennsylvania. So I was doing my nice little walkabout of the yard. You know, every day I come out here, see how everything's doing see if there's any issues, something that needs my attention, see what's ripe. And I have been eating strawberries now for about five days, which has been beautiful. They've been very tasty. I've, I've loved them things. They're always the first fruit of the year. My buddy Tony in West Virginia, he was telling me that his gummy berries are the first things that are ready for him. So I said, all right, well, my walkabout tomorrow, I'm going to come out here and see how they're doing. And you can see on these plants, there's definitely a good number of them. Um, I think these particular plants, these gummy berry um, bushes have only been here for, I think only about two or three years now. So they really have taken off. They really have put out a ton of fruit. For being so young, I've been really impressed. He loved the fruit, he was telling me, and he said it's also his earliest fruit. Said, all right, well, I haven't really tasted my gummy berries yet. Uh, last year we did get some fruit, but the birds got them all. So I've been really excited to see how these guys are going to do for me. And there's another one over here. It's a little smaller, a little bit less fruit, but uh, what's right next to it, which also fruits very early, is the honeyberry. And I said, all right, well, where's the where's the fruit? And then I started digging around in here, and oh my god, we have some ripe fruit. And not only are these ripe honeyberries, but they're pretty big. This is a really large sized berry. Actually, look at the, it looks like it's already been attacked by something. Or maybe it rubbed up against something. But that's bigger than my thumbnail. This is about two times the size of a blueberry, if you ask me. So I'm super excited to try this. And I also went around some other honeyberry plants. I have about six or seven of them scattered throughout the yard. And you can also see down in here, there's another one on this variety. I think I'm gonna pick this one as well. Now what I normally do and what has been said about these fruits is that people really don't give them the best reviews. And the reason they don't give them the best reviews is because I think a lot of people are picking them too soon. And what you're supposed to do is let them turn fully blue and then wait about two or three weeks. Uh, even You can even wait until they start falling off the plant, at which point they're is the highest, the sugar content's the highest in these, and you can get an accurate taste description of these fruits. But I had one over here that had fallen off. It's not completely blue. I don't think it probably formed correctly. Um, I have some plants actually that have been fruiting and they're just one year old. I just put them in the ground this spring. So we have this guy down here. This was a variety that I selected. This one's called uh, Boreal Beauty, or Boreal Buse, Beast, I'm sorry guys. So we got that one from Honeyberry USA. For those of you guys who know them, shout out to them. And then we also got this Honeyberry plant over here. And mind you, these guys are not in full sun. These guys are in shadier locations. And look, actually here's another berry right here that has fallen off. And this one is called, oh, I don't know, but it's Boreal, I think, Blizzard. 
It's in the Boreal series, and these are late bloomers. Varieties that will that will bloom later, but uh, also hopefully avoid my late frosts here in warmer parts of the mid-Atlantic. Um, that's definitely key. But these have what's said to be higher bricks, higher bricks score on these fruits. So for me, that's why I picked them up, because last year, not only do I think I was picking them too soon, but I think I need to find, and they're breeding them like crazy, I need to find a, a sweeter variety. So we're gonna see, so far this year, if we can get these guys to be sweet. So let's try them now, and if not, we're gonna let the rest, the remainder of them, hang on the plant. This is gonna be our nice little indicator, our nice little taste test. And I do this with all the fruits, right? You wanna pick a couple of the fruits off the plants and see how sweet they are, see if they're right, see if they're ready. And this is completely new to me, so I don't really know what I'm doing. But this one looks pretty good, and so does this one, so I think our shots are pretty, pretty decent. So let's try the, both of these that we would expect to be under right. This one's quite firm, and this side's completely green, so let's try this. Wow. You know what that tastes like exactly? For those of you guys who are younger, uh, that tastes like a sour, ch uh, sour apple warhead, but not as like puckery. That's actually really good. I don't even mind <laughs> that that was not sweet almost at all. That was really, um, really like a sour apple. I'm, I'm not kidding. All right, so let's try this other one here that's not as green, but definitely not perfectly ripe. Whoa. Okay, take that warhead, that sour apple flavor, and then add in a grape. Okay, now we have the two that are pretty sizable too. I mean, look at this one. This thing's bigger than my thumbnail. I mean, it's huge. I don't know which one we should try first, but let's try the bigger one first. I have a feeling this one's, it's more firm. It's probably not as ready. Let's see. That's pretty good, guys. Here's the inside. Now this reminds me a lot of a kiwi. I think if you took a grape, combine it with a kiwi, and it wasn't as sweet as both of them, it's just a little less sweet, that's what you get. And I think I said that last year. I'm pretty sure I said grape and kiwi last year, or I said, Definitely said kiwi last year. Let's try this last one. Maybe this will uh, be as sweet as we want them. No, but it's still really good. It's still really good. I love that. I love that tartness to them. They have a really interesting tartness that's not very sweet. I'm trying to get out of the sun here. Also, I think uh, the flavor is complex. Like it is a really interesting berry flavor with the kiwi flavors in there. Excuse the wind here, guys. Hopefully you can understand me right now. But um, really complex with the kiwi flavors, certainly. And there's also some like weird wildness to it. Weird wild flavor to it. That's almost like you pick a wild fruit, bring it back and eat it. It's just, it's got a weird, something weird about it, you know? Um, I feel it the same way about like Alpine strawberries, even the Mara de Bois strawberries, and the honeyberries specifically. They just have some weird wildness complexity to the, I actually really enjoyed that fruit. I really did. Um, I'm gonna give that fruit, out of all the fruits I grow, and it wasn't even sweet, guys. It was just pure tart, but it wasn't like, uh, Hmm. It wasn't so tart that it wasn't uh, manageable, you know? It wasn't like so tart that you just, you kind of pucker or you, you hate it. It wasn't astringent, 
You know, it wasn't sweet, but it had such a weird, complex flavor. So I'm gonna say it's at least a seven. At least a seven out of 10. Um, I could eat those things, man. I would love to eat more of those things. So for me, I'm in. And we're gonna see now if I can get these. I'm gonna put nets over them because the birds are gonna find these for sure. They did last year, they will again. We're gonna net all these plants here, get them I think to what would be the perfect ripeness and I'll come back at you guys again. Hopefully that seven I think can easily be boosted to a nine. I think they have potential to be a nine out of 10. I think they could compete with something like a kiwi berry. For me, I think it would beat probably a raspberry, it would beat a blackberry. Um, that's of course assuming we get the sugar that we want. So, all right guys, take care. That was the amazing honeyberry, to be honest with you. They actually are pretty amazing, I think. They fruit so early. try to keep you guys up to date and in touch with everything that's fruiting back here as it happens i'll give you guys honest reviews and uh, we'll talk to you all soon all right see you for tomorrow's video guys